And by the way, I'm not going to be the one making the choice as to who gets this guitar. That will be up to my Patreons. This one, I can definitely tell, has more luster to it. It is, it is definitely shy. So, Man, I don't know what to say. Uh, you don't need to say anything. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! So If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. But come on, that's beautiful, huh? Now when we add the clear coat, it's going to cover over this and give it all that same gloss look to it, a high gloss. And I think that's gonna really bring this together to make this back look amazing. Next thing that we have to do before we can gloss this, I'm so close, but I need to add a hole in here with the electronics cavity to add a phase switch so that you can reverse phase on the pickups. If you don't know what that means, it's essentially you're sending the you're sending the electronics out from being in phase with one another or in line with one another to out of phase, like they're going the opposite direction, and so the sound changes with your pickup. So we're gonna add a phase switch into here. To do that, I'm gonna start with a smaller pilot hole through the backside so I can see where I need to be. It'll come out the front, and if it does chip a little or anything, that's okay, because I'm gonna be coming back through with a quarter inch larger drill bit, and I will do it in reverse so that I don't chip out wood. It's time for me to spray here with diamond clear coat. Even though I've got good ventilation, still gonna wear a respirator for small particles. Uh, you wanna wear a respirator with this stuff. Well, I sprayed this out in the garage, took a shower. Man, that stuff just really stuck all over me. But boy, is it looking good. This is actually a couple hours dried, so it's looking really nice. After 24 hours, I will lightly sand this with about 800 grit sandpaper, and then I will spray a light coat and then I'm going to use gold fleck to sprinkle into this front surface uh, just lightly. Not going to overdo it. At least that's the plan unless I accidentally spill it. That's looking really good. Now obviously I did not spray it down here. I sprayed it out in the garage. I used uh, a respirator while I was working on it so that would be good. But boy, it's just, uh, yeah, that's, that's that diamond finish. This is just the initial coats. So I'm... Pretty thrilled about that. That's looking good. Now I want to take you upstairs and show you the yellow guitar. I've started clear coating that. 
Clear coating that with the Duplicolor clear coat, but I'm using the Pearl Duplicolor clear coat on it. So when you first look at it, it just looks yellow, but then I'll shine the light on it and it comes to life. All right, so now in the spray booth is the yellow guitar. Here's the back. And like that, it's just looking yellow, but if I start to shine some light on it, notice what happens. Hope you can pick up that sparkle. That's gonna look nice. Wow. Gonna be giving this guitar away. So if you know somebody you would like to nominate to receive it, look in the description down below my video and it'll tell you my email address and just I want to hear why you would like to see them get this guitar. So this is the back side. I can show you the front. I'll flip it over here once. So these are just the first coats of clear coat on here. I need to get a lot more but look at that sparkle in that clear coat now. See that's that's gonna be pretty cool looking. I like that. The clear coat spraying of both of these guitars took place yesterday. This one has been sprayed with the Duplicolor 1K Clear, and this is a gloss pearl finish. The, the fun thing about this, even though it just kind of looks like yellow, I, I don't see if you see any sparkle in there right now. And then this is the diamond finish. Now, by the way, what you are looking at is the first coats so you're going to see little pits and stuff, and obviously it doesn't look like a finished guitar because it's not. These are the first coats that are on it. I will wet sand it. They will get sprayed again. I'll wet sand it. It'll get sprayed again, and then wet sand it and get sprayed again. So it will uh, go through a series of at least three different times that I will do that. Uh, this one, I can definitely tell, has more luster to it. It is it is definitely shiner shine it is definitely shiny. That glossy glass like look is gonna come out. I can see that. This is nice. This actually has more coats. This has more coats of this than this one has of this. In fact this one has only been sprayed twice in one of the settings. This one has had seven coats throughout the day. So two coats seven coats. Uh, difference between those two and this is definitely looks thicker, it goes on different, it lays out nicer and as far as drying it's been 24 hours they're both dry, they're both ready to be wet sanded and then do some more but it's it's kind of fun trying this uh, diamond. I'm already just thinking hmm I like the way this turns out here. I guess we'll see all in all when we get to the very end of it uh, but this pearl of this, I like that too. Turn in your nominations for this guitar. This yellow, semi-hollow, my X Horizon is what I call them. This X Horizon guitar in yellow. I'm hoping this will be ready to give away in the next month. And by the way, I'm not going to be the one making the choice as to who gets this guitar. That will be up to my Patreons. I'm going to pass on the information to them and then they will vote and we'll see who gets it. Now I'm going to be wet sanding this guitar with 600 grit sandpaper, pushing pretty lightly. I actually prefer at this stage of the game, I would prefer to use 800 grit, but I'm having a harder time finding 800 grit sandpaper now. I used to be able to get it at Menards and Lowe's and Home Depot. And this initial sanding that I'm doing after these first coats is not really a leveling sanding. This is more of a scoring the surface sanding, meaning I'm just scratching the surface so that the next layer has uh, something to adhere to, and it adheres better to uh, a surface that has been just roughed up a little bit with some sandpaper, or if you're using uh, steel wool, you can do that. But you just, yeah, I'm not really doing this to level it. So I'm just doing this to more, uh, just, yeah, scratch it up a little bit. Here, let me readjust. I'll finish this quick and then, and I've got to do the uh, fretboard. And then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with this next level of spraying. All right, I've got this thing sanded and ready for another clear coat to go on it. Now between these next clear coats, I'm going to put on one thin coat, let it get a little tacky, and then we're going to start to sprinkle some gold dust 
onto the face of it. Just a little bit here and there, some gold fleck in the uh, surface of this. And then we'll be spraying more over top of that. I am right now just about in that 24 hour mark. And according to the diamond, it says it's preferable that you, if between the major coats that you're gonna be doing, that you do it within 24 hours uh, while it's still soft. You can expect to be, you can expect the surface to be completely hardened after 48 hours, like it's full capacity. So that's where we're at right now. And apparently there's people in my house that think they need to wash clothes and have clean clothes so if you hear a dryer behind me that's why while this layer is still tacky I'm going to start kind of just flecking on some of these gold flecks here and there the static electricity to this that's a big glob that's a big glob Obviously going to have to take some of that off. I brought tweezers along so I can do that to distribute our gold fleck around a little bit. This might not work as easy as I was hoping it would. Kind of expected this to be a little bit more dusty like than what it is. It's got a lot of static electricity to it there. Let's see, what do we think? Seriously guys, what I pictured was pixie dust falling on here. I was expecting this stuff to be much more dust-like and it's it was bigger chunks. The big problem was that there was so much static electricity with them that it just stuck together and no matter what I used to touch it with, would it would just kind of clump and stick and static. All that to say, I'm going to be sanding virtually most of this off. The other thing that happened is when I sprayed it, started spraying, it wasn't too bad out. Then the humidity rolled in and I can see that it affected this top layer, uh, which again, I'm taking almost all of it off anyway. So I'm gonna let the clear coat harden and then I'm going to wet sand it again and see where we're at with it. Now, if I totally don't like it, that's one of the reasons why I put another layer of clear coat on ahead of time. So I could just sand all the way down to that clear coat that didn't have that part of the gold in it. At this point, I like better what I did on purpose, like the lines and stuff. It's, I don't know if it's like a little OCD or whatever, but it's hard for me to just have random. And maybe I just need to have random and let it, let it be. I mean, there's a lot of art that has randomness added into the design and so, I'll take a look after I sand it uh, when it's hardened and then we'll go from there and see what we think. Gold into a clear coat, a little more challenging than I thought it might be. Well, I started off at 400 grit sandpaper trying to get this off and then I went to 320 and it was still taking a lot. So I'm actually going to go to 220 on the orbital just to get this uh, flat surface stuff off and then uh, we'll go back down and work on it by hand for the edges and stuff. Uh, the back, I didn't do like this, so I pretty much just need to worry about this front, and then I'm gonna have to sand off what I got on the fretboard here, stuff. So. Well, this is actually coming along okay. I'm starting to like what's happening here a little bit more and more as I do this. Uh, now I, I've pretty much taken the gold almost all off of this area here. There's a few little specks here and there, just kind of tie it in. But otherwise, I kind of have this sweep that comes like from here down to here that's got gold. So it's kind of like this little sweep of gold fleck in there. Part of me says, well, why didn't you test it on a scrap piece of wood first? And you guys are probably saying the same thing. Why didn't you test it on a scrap? Well, because it's 24 karat gold. <laughs> you don't want to waste it because uh, you don't get very much for a, a lot of money. What are you gonna do? You're gonna try that on scrap wood and toss it. Um, you know, you take your chances. I think that's one of the things with art overall. You do things you don't know how to do. Um, you try things that you've never done. That's how you learn. And a lot of times it's going through those difficult, hard, things that you don't know how to do that you kind of figure some things out and all of a sudden it becomes what you were dreaming if, if you can make that happen and so uh, you know I'm getting this to be a little bit more like what I was thinking and it's coming together and I kind of see it it, it kind of 
and uh, develops as I go. I didn't get pixie dust, I got cloudy with a chance of meatballs. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> but I was thinking about using a very fine like tea strainer or skimmer that you would use for food to skim off the top of the oil or whatever, uh, which is a really fine like screen to put the gold in that and then kind of like hold it way up and brush it and see if I can get little pixie dust and no more cloudy chance of meatballs. Well, look at that. 800 grit sandpaper. Just went to my local Baumgars to pick up some 400 grit sandpaper and they had some 800. So I got some, got a couple packages. I had more actually. So I thought about buying them all, but I was like, well, not right now, but hey, so it's not gone. There's some out there. If any of you have been paying close attention and notice that I've been spraying over the frets for these first few uh, rounds of spraying, it's true, I did spray over the frets. Um, I've just been doing some reading stuff and read about a couple of hmm, fairly well-known guitar making companies that that's what they do. They just spray right over the top of the frets and then they'll let the, the strings just wear off the, the thin layer that's over the fret. Uh, now what I'm doing and the reason why I'm doing it this way is I'm actually spraying the first couple, allowing the, the clear coat to come up along the edge here of the fret so it, it's not all like gouged or looks like we're missing something against the fret. Uh, but doing that and then I'm I, I'm actually sanding off, I'm with 600 grit sandpaper, sanding off the fret, sanding that off of there, and then I will have to obviously go all the way to polishing it later on when I polish the rest of the fretboard. But now I am going to put a very thin piece of tape just right over the very top of this, and I still want the sides, the edges, that corner there to be able to get a little bit of the clear coat in as well. And that won't make any difference for later on if you want to take the frets out or do a fret change someday, sometime. And these are a gold fret as well. Okay, I got my wife's permission to use one of these strainers. I'm gonna put some gold in there. And I'll use a spoon to kind of brush it through here. See if we can make this work. We'll try again. All right, that should be plenty. Okay, now all I want is this area. Can I curve it around up into this area? And I just want it to be just really light. So first I'm just going to see if I can get some to go through just by tapping it. That's working. Yep, I'm getting just fine flakes. That's what I want. Much better, much more like what I was hoping to get. And again, I'm kind of just swirling it here, trying to make it look like a little bit of a starry sky, you know, coming through with the gold. Well guys, this is getting much closer to what I was looking for, hoping for. Uh, you can see there's a lot of little dots there. Well, that's because of the gold dust on there. That should even out some here yet, but uh, you know, I, I already, I mean, I know I'm gonna have to sand and respray again. I just won't have to sand near as much as I just got done doing. So, but that's going to be, that's going to be more what, like what I'm looking for. This is kind of how the diamond clear sets up. You can see it really does kind of level out. And the gold fleck is much more like what I'm wanting. This of course is still wet and it is not the final product. It is going to dry then I will sand it, wet sand it, and then I will probably give it another spray, pretty sure. And then we'll go from there. 